All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, figured I would do a uh, first impressions of the uh, final build. And uh, I guess give you guys just a few thoughts on the kit and, uh, you know, just go from there. So uh, basically, I guess um, everything went together uh, beautifully. The kit is really nice. Uh, the quality of it is great. The plastics are super strong feeling. Um, the fit and finish of everything was great. The uh, majority of the screws are pretty tough to get in there, so you definitely aren't going to want to build this uh, build this kit by hand. Um, your hands will be hurting for sure. Your fingers will be hurting. <laughs> um, I ended up using a full size drill uh, because my small drill that I use for RC wrenching um, just wasn't cutting it. Uh, it's just a little cheapy drill, but uh, it works for you know being small and fitting in my pit bag. But uh, uh, I guess. Um, Really, some things that I liked about it was um, cool features, I guess, I could go through. Uh, the suspension is great. It feels awesome, especially after, if you saw my last videos where I polished all the shock shafts and, uh, you know, just went through and uh, made sure they were uh, pretty much dialed. So, um, but what's cool, I guess, about this car is um, it comes with an aluminum servo saver. Uh, and then the servo saver here has a screw so you can lock it in, which is nice. And it does have a little foam. I don't know if you can see it on video, but there's a little foam cover to go around the threads. So if you ever have to adjust it, you're not fighting any grime. Um, really? There really doesn't feel like there's any slop in this kit. I mean, what you see me moving is I can try and hold it, but there is literally, like, no slop in this car. There's a little bit in there. Just a, just a cunt hair of slop, and it's really, it's coming from these, uh, Links here, the balls, the play in the balls. All the balls, all the links are nice and free. They're not uh, too free, though. Um, I like how you can adjust the uh, A-arm stiffness with uh, optional carbon uh, inserts. I've looked on A-Main, and they have multiple varieties of companies uh, making them in varying thicknesses. Um, I think I'm probably going to opt for the Avid ones, at least just for the rear for now. Um, I think the Avid ones were, I don't know, like point, oh, they were like three quarters of a millimeter or one millimeter or something like that. So they were still fairly thin because I don't want them to be too stiff. This car is going to get used outdoors as well. Um, what else? Oh, it's definitely nice to see the uh, bleeder screws on the caps the new um fellow bladders they uh were just as easy to build uh as a, as a standard bladder um i guess i really can't tell you if there's going to be a major difference with those um comes with a uh quick change motor mount which is a really nice addition i like that i mean it's simple stuff like that that i wonder why a lot of rc companies don't do little things like that so it's just like you know i mean it, it's just should be done it should be a standard like regular cars you drive to and from work every day or school or whatever you do you know the options eventually become standard features uh, it'd be nice to see some things like that in the RC industry go that way. Um, yeah, I mean, it feels really good. Uh, the brake pads, I noticed that the uh, brake pads, they're uh, a semi-metallic uh, pad, and the amount of uh, material that's actually on the uh, brake pad itself is 
uh, nice and thick, you've got at least two, two and a half millimeters of uh, material there before they uh, start grinding on metal. So those should last nice, good long time. The, uh, I don't know if you guys can see it, but the brake discs, they are drilled out so they'll cool a little bit faster, uh, similar to the Mugen style and many other brands. Uh, another thing that I thought was just absolutely genius is how they put these carbon pieces here so in the future you can, you know, if, if something changes where they find a, you know, a different geometry that works better, you can just go buy these carbon parts and slap them on and now you've got the, you know, updated front end or whatever. Uh, I really like the rear hubs. It's the same same scenario with those. It's two carbon pieces here, and um, stock it comes with a Type Three. And I think what I was reading online is a lot of guys like the top, the Type Five, so I'll have to look into that. Um, I'm gonna keep it stock though for a minute and see how I, how I like it. I'm gonna give it the shakedown stock. Um, uh, what else? Um, I mean, really, the quality is awesome. I love this nice big radio tray. There's plenty of room for a battery and, uh, you know, your receiver and transponder and whatnot. Plenty of room in there. Um, pretty cool that they include the Proline Lexon wing. That's cool. Uh, what else can I say about this car? Good, at least. Um... I really can't say enough. The uh, when I built that Mugen car, I was really wowed by the quality. And and when I see this car online, I you know I get that oh, it's HPI, it's HPI, it's like you know like a Basher brand or something. But uh, with this car, you definitely feel a hundred percent that it's a race bred vehicle. You can just the quality of it is there. The plastics, the carbon, all of the machining was great. There wasn't any burrs or anything on any of the machining that they did. Um, you know, the springs feel like a really nice high quality spring. This thing is just built like a tank. Um, and I've driven them before too and they drove awesome. So um, that's what kind of made me want to get one. Uh, I guess if I could say a few negatives about it, or not even negatives, but just pet peeves, because um, every car has their own positives and negatives. Um, other than a few things in the manual that were hard to understand or not very clear, there was a few things in the manual that they need to update. They should have the overall shock length um, in the manual which they don't uh, I actually had to find it from a uh, video uh, that uh, Gord Tessman did on Ty Tessman's YouTube channel so he's got the uh, when you after you build the shocks you want to have uh, the fronts at uh, 35 I believe and 44 for the rear don't quote me on that. Go to Ty Tessman's YouTube channel and watch the shock build video that his uh, uh, dad, Gord Tessman, does uh, on him. Um, like I said, a couple things weren't very clear in the manual. Um, but uh, what else? I would really like to see them kind of go away with this style of a... Uh, you know, you got your A block, B block, C block, D block. This style where the hinge pin goes all the way through and then it's got a nut here. Not much a fan of that design. Um, it would be nice to have just a captured hinge pin in there and it would just be that much easier to wrench on and that much easier to, you know, make setup changes to. Which, going to that too as well, is the way these inserts are made and this uh, D block is made. You can't adjust the uh, your toe end and the rear of the car. This block is three degrees. You can only adjust your anti-squat, really. Um, so you won't be able to adjust your your rear toe without buying an option block, which I'm 
unaware of if they have any option blocks. So stock it's three degrees. Um, and uh, I think it's well, the front. Front is the same setup. The hinge pin goes all the way through, and you know, and you've got spacers and uh, shims in there. The spacers and stuff I can deal with. It's just kind of like a pain when you're trying to, uh, you know, wrench on the car on race day, and you want to make a setup change, and you got to hold something here. And imagine you got your motor and everything. I was already in here, and you got to get in here with like some needle nose or something and hold this nut down to pull the hinge pin out so you can change the inserts. It just seems like uh you know like one of those things so m2c uh they make uh captured hinge pins for this vehicle right now at the time of this video they only have the c and d block or the rear blocks out and available to be ordered the i did talk to mitch uh mitchell looper at m2c this week about the a and b blocks for the front and uh, he said they should be coming out shortly uh, after the new year. So hopefully we won't wait too long for those. Um, what else? I just seen he put another cool product on there the other day. What was it? I can't even remember. Maybe it'll come back to me. Um, yeah, a couple things. Um, I would like to see uh, optional sway bars included in the kit. That would be nice. Um... I understand. I mean, this is a this kit feels very high quality to me. I don't feel like I was ripped off or anything by that means. So, really, for them to not include uh, extra sway bars, it ain't no big deal. I've got piles of sway bars from other cars that I'm sure will fit on here. But um, I really can't say too much negative about it. It's just there's certain little engineering things that kind of go. You know, all right, yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a pain to, uh, you know, do a front diff or a rear diff. But I can live with that, I guess, if the car works as good as, uh, you know, I want it to. But I will be upgrading the M2C. <clears throat> I will be upgrading the M2C uh, A through D blocks here on the car. And uh, hopefully that will make my life a little bit easier because I change my diffs often, very often. Um, so when I, I mean, when I get a new car, I exhaust pretty much every single setup option you possibly can with a car. So um, I'll be going, I'll be opening it up often and putting it back together. So I don't want to be fighting with these hinge pins. So that's definitely probably the biggest negative for me. But there's so much positive with the car that I can live with that. Um, so if I guess if Hot Bodies is listening, if they they would consider anything with their next buggy truggy, um, hell, even for the D four one three, I've got that car and it uses a similar hinge pin. I would love to see you guys do a captured hinge pin. That just would be awesome. Um, pipe mount, man, eh, nothing special here. I like the uh, one that's kind of coiled like a pigtail and uh, has a little bit of spring to it so you're not, uh, you know, beating up your gasket back here on hard landings. Uh, you can, you know, lose a, or have a little give with that pigtail style one. Um, Mugen makes a pigtail style one so if you want one of those you can buy it off of uh, MugenSeekyRacing.com which uh, I'll probably do is I think I might have some extra ones and put that on. Um, another really cool thing that I noticed too was, um, these shock boots, or <laughs> shock boots, these, uh, axle boots here, <clears throat> they are super heavy duty. I was actually really impressed. Um, one of the things when I got this car and, and, you know, done some investigation on it was that, uh, you know, I had these and I was, I'm sometimes not a fan of them because it seems like everybody who uses them, they're so thin and junky and they just tear off after like one race day and it just becomes a pain in the ass to, to constantly keep up on that stuff but these ones right here are the best ones that i've seen yet they're super thick super durable there still is um you know plenty of uh, flex in them uh i mean i stretched them all the way out with my needle nose pliers to get the 
end of the dog bone in there and get them through there and I didn't snap or tear a single one and you know I just they're packed full of uh, high pressure black grease and uh, you know it's is what it is it's really nice design if it works uh, so if anybody else is listening and you use these on your car take a look at the hot body ones and uh, maybe recommend using those because they're a very nice heavy duty uh, CV boot there the shock boots were also they were also a very nice uh, heavy duty boot um yeah, I guess uh, I really can't say too much more about it. Uh, these new rear hubs, they just look freaking badass. I love the way they look. Suspension looks awesome. The chassis looks awesome. You got a, a little steel plate here, so when your chassis starts to wear out, you can replace that plate. Though, honestly, I feel like this is kind of uh, pointless. You could... Um, I mean, what are you going to do, wear the chassis out and then replace this, and then now this thing is sticking out off of the chassis and creating some kind of drag underneath your car. I'd rather just see a normal all the way across just aluminum, and I'll pay the 80 bucks to replace the chassis when I need to. So, um, Oh, yeah, I wanted to talk about this. I almost forgot. Um, I understand why they use these pins around here on the shocks to hold the shock eyelets in and the sway bar eyelet see they use a little pin here it's not threaded or anything it's just smooth you drop that in and then you got to flip the car over and then you've got a set screw that holds that pin in um i understand why they did that because it creates it's smoother because you don't have that that ball riding on the threads of a screw and potentially backing that screw out but if you use a left-handed screw here and here it'll be fine and really I can't see that it's gonna cause that much of a binding issue in your car I would almost rather just have screws just for easier access of working on the car and one less screw to pull out so um, that's kind of like, eh, not a big huge fan of that. I might sound like I'm dogging on it, but actually what I see from that is I see the, um, crazy amount of engineering that was put into it that they just basically wanted to make this car as free as possible, like zero bind anywhere. And that's a hundred percent exactly what they did. That is exactly what they did. And that's probably likely the case with the hinge pins because with the hinge pin going all the way through the a arm has the whole surface to ride on it doesn't have the end of the hinge pin being pinched in the toe blocks having that bind on the end of the hinge pin so i can see how they they went with that uh mindset and it's been like that for a minute i guess you know since the 812 as well but um uh, overall, this this car is looking pretty sweet, and I cannot wait to run it. It's just a shame that it's a win, uh, winter time right now. So, uh, I don't know. Hot Bodies is talking about an e-car. Maybe I should build an e-car. Or maybe I should convert this one and run it for uh, some indoor electric stuff and uh, build another one for nitro. Um, there are conversion kits online. There's uh, RC Monster makes one. Um, VRP, they were making one, and I'm not sure if they still do, <clears throat> and actually that's what M2C, what I was talking about earlier, is M2C, they, they just, uh, posted on their website, they have a, a really nice conversion kit for this car, looks awesome, and then, um, I don't think they have a battery tray for it. So you might have to source a battery tray from somewhere else. I know the RC Monster battery tray. Um, you know, you can get the RC Monster uh, motor and center diff mount. And then they have a battery tray. But they got one of those, like, big, gigantic, heavy battery trays, which I'm not really a fan of. So what I thought about doing was just um, buying a Mugen batter battery tray um, because it's a really thin, nice, light one. And it's set up so that if you want, you can run... Uh, two shorties in there and kind of have the packs, you know, staggered on one side. Um, 
try to keep the weight more towards the center and the front. Um, plus, it's got a really nice spot for your ESC. So, you know, when you go to wrench on it, you can just pull a battery tray and an ESC can come out with it. And just a really clean setup. So, um, either A, hot bodies um, would be cool if they hurried up with that e buggy. I mean, it's winter time now. Uh, I know they're probably scrambling to get their 216 ready, but. Um, from what I'm hearing is uh, e-buggy is right after the 216, so. But, um, yeah, I guess I should um, maybe just give you guys a few close-ups of everything, and um, I think that's all I have to say about it. They do give you the taller uh, rear wing mount in the kit as a uh, tuning option. These rear hubs are uh, really nice looking. I love the way they look. They look really trick, man. It's nice to see some nice to see some aluminum coming in there stock. They could have they could have easily opted for some plastic stuff, and uh, no, they didn't. So. Definitely, uh, this car is uh, some next level type of uh, vehicle for real. When I was putting it together, I was like thinking like, you know, wow, I got like twice as many parts in these bags as I do as uh, when I built my Mugen cars. The Mugen cars are so awesome and they're so beautifully simple. <clears throat> And uh, this car, putting it together, it's just so, there's so many little pieces, and uh, it definitely brought me back to my uh, D413 build. I'm building their little Hot Bodies car, and uh, just all the little intricacies of it, and uh, just all the little stuff that, you, that you, you're that you going through it, and you're just, you know, wow, I can't believe they even took that extra step to do that, so... But yeah, it feels great. Suspension feels great. Hopefully I should uh, be able to get it out on the uh, track after the new year here. I uh, still got a wrench on two other cars at the moment. Alright, I think I've rambled long enough. Uh, this is the Hot Bodies D815. First initial impressions, and uh, hopefully I didn't bore you guys too much with me uh, rambling for too long, but um, figured I'd give you guys an idea what was uh, going on in my head after, uh, you know, building it. I wanted to record some of my thoughts on it before too much time went by and I forgot about all that stuff, so um Hopefully you guys uh, are enjoying the videos, and if you got ideas for something you want me to do, then uh, I guess give me a shout in the comment section, and I'll try to uh, squeeze it into a video. Alright guys, have a good one.